Hello and welcome to this tutorial of hybrid inverse kinematics. In this tutorial, we are going to establish an inverse kinematics hierarchy upon this robotic arm. Now to begin with, let's explore the hierarchy. We've got a number of joints, and for each of these joints, we've, we've actually added uh, hinge limits, which are joint limits essentially, in order to constrain the degrees of freedom upon which we can rotate these joints. So in this case, we've got a hinge limit with the normal being the x-axis. Here we've got a twist limit, essentially, and so on and so forth. Now, just for example's sake, I'm going to remove this hinge limit here to show you how I add it and modify it. So to do so, you, you grab your actual joint, you add a component, you look for dynamic joint limit hinge as a component, then you can add that, and then within, you can then press one of these buttons over here to initialize by aligning it to one of the local axes. In this case, for the hand, I want it to rotate um, along the local Z axis. So I'm going to press align to child Z. And then you could change the actual limit angle as well as the offsets or manually control them using the interface. Let's set the limit to such a range. And there you have it. With our joint limits established, let's now establish our inverse kinematics node, which is the most important step. So to do so, I'm going to create an empty game object. I'm going to call this robot arm IK. I'm going to add a component and I'm going to search for hybrid inverse kinematics nodes. Right now that we've done so, you could see we've got, we need to define the IK chain definition, which is simple enough. It's essentially, uh, you need to define a root node. So in this case, let's say it's R2, an end node as well, which in this case, let's say is R6. This is our end node on this particular hierarchy. And then let's set the radius to 0 0.3, initialize post from last frame, just to make sure it's continuous based on the last frame. And the target transform, I'm going to drag in this game object called target transform, which is where our end target is going to move towards. Uh, finally, when it comes to our joint limits, yes, we enable joint limits in this case. I'm going to set the joint limit strength to one, and I'm going to use strict limits in this case uh, in order to remove any impression of soft limits because it is a robotic arm after all. All right, so with that done, I'm going to press process IK joint chain because by, by pre-processing it, we can actually select these individual joints or the representations of the joints for the node and we can modify certain values. Uh, but with that said, Let's begin by simply taking a look at the results. All right, so as you could see, we move around our target transform and then the inverse kinematics is in operation and it adheres to joint limits essentially. Um, now what we can do is we could change some of these limits. Let's change them live. So in this case, I think our particular limit is too liberal, so let's change that. I'm going to decrease these limits over here. There you go. And essentially, every single joint is, is moving in order to achieve that target, you know, across their degrees of freedom, essentially. And there you have it. We can also rotate this around. I think for the bottom, let's change this joint limit over here. I think this is way too liberal. So I'm going to constrain it so that we've got a limited range of motion left, uh, along that particular joint.
All right, so what, let's see, let's simply clamp this entirely. And if we do clamp it, then that becomes stiff. However, with the twist rotation, you know, we're free to move back and forth and so on and so forth. Finally, if we go into our arm IK node, we can select constrain end orientation. And by doing so, if I now select the target transform and begin rotating it, then as you can see, our end orientation is also uh, restricted. So we can control the end orientation. And if I set it in global space, then we're doing the same except for in global space as opposed to local space of the hand. And our IK should try to adapt accordingly. But within those joint limits. The next thing I'd like to demonstrate in this demo is the use of manual constraints upon joints along the chain. So let's create an additional target and I'm going to call it elbow target. We are going to constrain the elbow of this robotic arm towards this target such that as we interpolate towards as the hand interpolates towards its target, the elbow uh, gets pushed towards its own target along the way. Now, in order to add manual constraints, what we need to do is to grab the, the arm IK node and then to select the elbow uh, node, essentially. Now, when we select the particle representing the joint, you'll see that in the UI, we're presented with a few options, keyframes, manual constraints, and none. Now, by default, they're, they're set to keyframe, but because we have no keyframes applied whatsoever, this is simply going to get ignored either way. So what we can do is press manual constraints, and that will reveal a target transform field, which we can fill uh, with our own target transform, essentially. And we could choose whether to only apply the, a, a positional constraint or whether we wish to apply a rotational constraint as well, i.e. constraint orientation. I'm, I'm going to uh, stick to the defaults for now. Let's grab the elbow target and pl place it into the target transform uh, for that elbow joint, meaning the elbow is going to follow that transform as a constraint in a way. Uh, now, the priority is always given to the hand, to the end target, but it will at least help push the elbow in that direction. So with that done, Let's play the scene. All right, so now that we've got that constraint, the elbow will be constrained towards its own target. And what we could do is we can grab the elbow target and move it back and forth, essentially. So as you can see, we're moving the elbow target and we're kind of solving for both in many ways. I can also take the arm IK and constrain the end orientation of the hand. So we can grab that target transform and start cha changing the rotation. So now we've got the, the ends being constrained, but also the elbow. So we can help choose the direction in which we're actually interpolating. There we go. All right, so using joint limits, we can regulate the interpolation of our, in, of our inverse kinematics to a degree. However, there's only so much you could do with joint limits. Now, in order to regulate the way in which we interpolate towards our target, we need more control than that. 
Now, Hybrid IK is powerful because it offers a feature just to achieve that. It, this feature comes in the form of, of uh, parametrizing the space using keyframe poses, essentially, uh, which maps particular end targets to a pose that we can bias towards. Now, how can we use this feature? Well, to use this feature, we could take a pose. So let's take the initial static pose here. And then in the IK node, we can press, we can go under keyframe constraints, and then we can press this button over here in order to add a pose keyframe. There you go. Now, what we've just done is we've mapped this particular end target to this pose. So whenever our target transform happens to fall into this green sphere, then this pose of the arm is what we're looking to achieve during the interpolation. Now let's do a bit more. So we could say, if we take, I'm gonna select one of these over here, like this particle here, and then I'm gonna press select joint game object. Now I'm going to create a new pose, which I wish to keyframe. Let's say this one over here. And with that done, I'm going to say, add joints pose keyframe. There you go. So now we've got these two uh, keyframe poses and what it means is whenever we actually move our target transform between them, then we interpolate between those keyframe poses in order to regulate the way in which we interpolate as opposed to randomly because without this system, then ultimately with inverse kinematics, there's actually all kinds of possibilities in which you can interpolate as long as you reach that target. And that's not necessarily what we want. And as artists, and designers, often you wish to control how that interpolation takes place. Um, so finally, I'm going to add a few more, let's add two more keyframes. So let's say we have one where this join over here kind of rotates towards its limits. And then this one over here um, kind of rotates as such, let's say twists. So whenever our target position happens to be somewhere here, then we rotate the base and then we twist the join right after that. And finally, we achieve such a rotation. Just for argument's sake. So we're parametrizing the space with different keyframes. Now, once we achieve that pose, we're gonna press on the IK node again, then we'll say add joint pose again. So now we've got two poses, and finally I'm going to add a third one by doing something similar, essentially. Let's add that twist. Here we go, all right. So let's also add that as a keyframe. And now we've got four keyframes essentially. One, two, three, four. We can actually cycle between them, which is cool. So we've essentially saved these key poses. And our inverse kinematics is, is going to essentially interpolate between them and beyond. Um, so with that done, uh, again, you can select them through here as well, through the interface. Uh, but the actual node does actually save the zero pose, i.e. the initial pose, which you can always change by pressing this button over here, set zero rotations to current pose. But we're gonna keep it as is, and you could delete keys as, as required. So with that done, let's play this once again. All right, so now whenever we move that target position uh, within this space, you could see that, that this entire space is parametrized. And as I move the target between one keyframed end location to the other, the arm takes on the correct appropriate pose for that position of the end target. I can also swing left and right. And as I do, uh, the arm matches the keyframe pose. So this gives us really fine control into how we interpolate along different end targets.
Now, of course, this doesn't mean that we're constrained within these uh, points, but it simply regulates our system, meaning we can actually uh, kind of move our end targets beyond these points There you go. All right. Thank you for watching. That's hybrid inverse kinematics upon a robotic arm.